All right, I think we're almost done. Eight feet all the way around. Our bracing is now up. I haven't filmed in a few days. We have our scaffolding on, our hand railing on, but we still have to do up around the bedrock. But other than that, just that back corner there needs to be finished. And the boys are doing a little bit of finishing touches up top. We have to put some rebar in and the form lock uh, in the top. But Dad and I right now are going to put in the window pockets as well as the beam pockets. So we have two beams right where these footers are in a row. So we have to put a pocket into here so that the beam can sit in it. And then also I have one window at the back here and then I have two up front there. So we're going to be figuring that out. So I just wanted to show you as well. This is a full, the full ICF brace system. You have your post that actually helps brace it against the wall with your trough. That all gets screwed down. And then there's this turn key here. You can turn it and it'll actually push the wall in or out so that you can plumb it. And then this bracket here helps hold the scaffolding and the railing on. So it's a really easy system. You put your pin in the ground and then there's another pin here that just holds this piece and a pin there and that's it. It's super simple. The boys put it up in no time and it's, uh, it's expensive, but I think it saved us a lot of time. But then again, time uh, is money and money is time, so. There is our basement. Good morning guys. The sun isn't up yet and we are getting this wall done today. We are supposed to pour concrete tomorrow. The basement is done inside and all we have to do is up on the bedrock pretty much and put rebar in. Matthew is probably going to be here today hopefully. Kyle is off today because it's his weekend off. But we got that done yesterday and then the boys got that moved yesterday and now we're gonna start forming up on the rock uh, in the crawl space so I'm getting to work now it's about 7 a.m. Uh, Kyle was just getting up Damien was just getting up not sure if dad's up but I'm gonna get going on this so that we can finish this in time later that same evening we're close That's to being done we're getting there. Good morning guys, it is a poor day. Um, I still feel like crap. I've been sick for the last, I don't know how long it feels like. And it's a really early day. Yesterday was early, the day before was early because we're not actually even finished yet. Um, still a lot to do this morning before the pour. We finally have all of the ICF up, which is good. We actually have almost a full skid of ICF to go back, which is like $600, which is awesome. Uh, some zip ties and foam. And yeah, so this morning we have to, let me go up here quickly up on the dirt pile. So here is our basement. So a lot of people were asking, is this going to be the uh, house all the way up? And no, this is the whole house. Um, <clears throat> looks much bigger once you get those on, but that will be crawl space and this will be basement because of the rock. So we lost more than half or half of our basement. I haven't actually done the calculation yet, but you can actually see how much basement we lost. And it sucks because, I mean, we were expecting all this basement and now we don't get it. And that basement is really jotty and, I mean, I can work with it. I have ideas, uh, bedroom there, bathroom there. That little section there is going to be for a pressure tank and then a storage unit, <clears throat> like storage, 
and then a rec room, and then we have another utility room, and then stairs over there, so it'll work out, it just, it's discouraging when you lose half your basement that you're not expecting, because we were expecting for Bedrock to only be, like, this little corner originally, so, anyways, this is our basement, uh, and crawl space, um, so this morning, what we have to do is, we have two windows at the front there. We have to buck them out, which means you'll see there, like ply plywood and wood around them so the concrete just doesn't pour out. We were supposed to have a window here um, in the utility room, but it's kind of in the way, really, of the all the plumbing and stuff. So we weren't going to waste time putting that in. I would have loved to have two in the rec room here, but because of the layout of the house upstairs there's going to be a deck and then and then not enough like grade level um clearance here so because the dirt will come up to this high what else we have some bracing to do on this side the eight foot wall there and then the eight foot wall here uh we have some plywood to do as well like covering I did all the foam last night in the dark along the edges a lot of it has to be vacuumed out this morning because we cut all this ICF yesterday actually that doesn't look too bad but there are spots like there the foam needs to come out and yeah so what else I'm trying to think we have to finish this corner I can do that right now and then foam that quickly good morning <laughs> really? <laughs> so, yeah, these are our windows out front. And, oh, we have to move this bracing stuff so that the truck can get in here this morning. We have to seal all the common seams. So, yeah, we have to uh, do all the seams. What else? I'm trying to think of what else. Buck out the windows. Did you get a piece of plywood? I am going to finish that corner and then start cleaning this up so that the truck can get in here. Uh, well, I have to go quietly, get... <clears throat> uh, move the walls out while nobody's here. Move the walls out? <laughs> well, we have to plumb the walls yes, out, Yes, right? we can. <laughs> just sounded funny how you said move the walls out. <laughs> so we We're just gonna expand our basement, you know, the day of the poor. <laughs> so we need a cordless. Those drywall screws I had last night will work. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have our ledger board on for our wide joists. All of the form lock is in. I'm working on getting the verticals rebar in, the 5 8 uh, It's anywhere from 12 inches to 16 inches. Yeah, I want to take pictures for Paul. Don't drop that camera in there. Oh, well. Drop protection. So there's our verticals, five eighths, anywhere from 16 inches to 12 inches apart. One eternity later. Well guys, that is it for our pour. I did not have a chance to film anything. Um, the pump truck and yeah, we're gonna give you a bath tonight. The pump truck and the concrete trucks got here before we even finished doing what we needed to do. <clears throat> so we were running around like crazy, trying to brace it all and make sure that we weren't gonna have any blowouts. Well, <laughs> we ended up with two blowouts, but it wasn't bad. They weren't horrible. We had to buck out those windows up there. This was our first blowout here in this little corner because we had a little chunk of ICF that we scribed into the bedrock and we didn't have a chance to brace it and we totally forgot about it. So it just kind of like poured, like pushed the piece out because it wasn't attached to anything, of course. So it just kind of poured out, which was fine. But then we got the, all this bracing on before we got the rust poured, all the bracing around. We were getting desperate, like I even put two by two, eight feet long, just because I had no choice. I didn't have time to cut. We did not have 
batteries. We were like running out of screws. We were running out of batteries. So um, I ran along here and tried to get as many brace pieces on as possible. So I did these and then I did like there. I don't think I did that one. I can't remember. It just went by like insanely fast. And then I was down here and braced here and that and that and that and down there. Um, same with that side. I braced all along there. And then that was our second blowout there. A piece of ICF actually let go. So I don't know what happened, whether it just wasn't tied like vertically or horizontally or what happened, but just a piece like blew out. Um, so we had to fix that. And then that seam there, we had to like, you'll see there, <laughs> we were running out of pieces of plywood. We didn't have time to cut, so I just grabbed whatever I could to make sure that we braced it. But all the concrete is in around. I tried to get drone footage this morning. I'll put what I can of it in, but my drone was actually, I guess, dead and it was freezing cold this morning. So I thought I was gonna actually drop it out of the air. Luckily I didn't, um, but you'll see the shape of the house. Uh, what it looks like, so this is our house size. Um, it's hard to see all at once. But so for weeks and weeks and weeks, I've only showed you that and tried to explain this here, but this is actually all house. So this is just crawl space and that is basement, but this is our whole house and we're not even anywhere near done the garage yet. We haven't started it. Where those two drops are there, that will be all garage there. So it's a huge house. Everyone did so amazing today. My uncle showed up first thing this morning to help us. If he wasn't here, we would have been so screwed. We wouldn't have been able to do it, achieve it. Um, he was running around just as much as Kyle and I. Yes. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> there was extra concrete left in a bucket, so he poured it out. Um, anyway, so my uncle was here and he did so amazing and we're so thankful that he came Dad was here from 630 on I was up at 630 um, I believe it was still dark when I came out here with my drone. The sun wasn't up anywhere near up yet and uh, Yeah, so we actually didn't get to finish uh, rebar So we kind of had to put that in after the concrete was done and then we'll just cut them off. And then all of our anchor bolts um, for our sill plates. So that is them, finally. And Kyle is actually already taking down bracing. And that's the reason why we actually had no choice but to pour today, uh, even if we weren't finished, because the bracing costs so much. So the bracing is $1,000 for a week because we have two skids over there somewhere and it's like $460 per skid per week. So we wanted to get it back within the week because we didn't realize it was that much money. We thought, the guy told us at the beginning that it was like 400 bucks and we thought it was gonna be 400 bucks. So anyways, we wanted to get that back as soon as possible because otherwise it would be $1,000 wasted for nothing. We actually have a full skid of ICF back there. We have some form lock that we get to take back, which is those pieces. We have zip ties. Where? No, 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 stay there. Really? Are you just filming me to film me? <laughs> I'm filming you, filming yourself. Um, I'm actually just chilling on the wall here. <laughs> so anyways, that's why we're taking apart the bracing. The bracing for the actual walls has to stay up at least 24 hours. We would like to do it 48, but we don't have 48 hours. So 24 hours, but Kyle is taking down the scaffolding part, which is the part you walk on, and then the hand railing, because all of that doesn't need to be up there to actually brace the wall. It's all of these angle pieces that brace the wall. So we have a huge mess to clean up the next week or so. There's styrofoam everywhere, wood everywhere, tools everywhere, and uh, yeah, we just gotta get it cleaned up and then it's seven days before we can backfill and then we got to start the garage foundation and putting backfill 
I gotta order I Joyce's tomorrow, and trusses, our trusses are six to eight weeks out. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be crazy next little while. You probably haven't seen videos in weeks <laughs> because I just don't have time. So anyways, I think we're gonna finish this up tonight. Just getting the scaffolding down and the hand railing down and that'll be it so if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and we will see you tomorrow thank you so much for watching bye guys say bye bye bye, bye.